Have you ever had a dream so vivid that it felt real that when you wake up, you can remember every single detail of it? Oh shoot, I just realized I wanted to tell you some stories. I have my retainer in. Let me take that out. See, I'm relatable. <sighs> just girly things. <laughs> Do you ever have a dream that's so vivid you wake up remembering every single detail of it, but then 30 minutes later, you just completely forget? I have those all of the time. I would say I have an overactive imagination actually. And I've been getting these vivid dreams since high school. So I got in a habit of keeping a dream journal. I started in high school and the last entry I have is from June. But the reason I'm making this video is because I had the most vivid dream last night and I can't remember it. Very sad because it was a good dream too. But what I do have is a lot of crazy. My dreams are crazy. I was reading through these to try to find some that would be good to read to y'all. Tom Hiddleston makes multiple appearances. <laughs> um, I think Sherlock Holmes does too, if I remember correctly. Um, I was a fangirl, still am, but I used to be in it. So yeah, this is Bedtime Stories with a girl with an overactive imagination. Coming to you live from my bed. Bed tour. This pillow may look weird, it's cause it's an L. My mom bought it when she broke her shoulder, but I liked it when I was healing like a conch piercing. Thought it would be good for my rook piercing. It's not, so it just takes up space in my bed. With this, I have a total of six pillows. Okay, so let's get into it. You know how I said that I dreamt about famous people? Yeah, I also sometimes dreamt about crushes. Any of my past crushes surface in here, I'm replacing their name. These crushes may have been from high school and college. I've kept it a secret this long. Why do you think I would tell you now? Yeah, this one was weird. I read the first paragraph and I was like, oh, that's a weird sentence. Um, Let's just read it on camera and see what happens. I think I'll title this one birthday party on the run. I had a dream that started when I was young. I was in a little home with just my mom, but it wasn't my mom from real life. And she would always tell me, do not fret dear, but only if your underwear is hot. Huh? Anyways, fast forward to the present day and my parents throw this really nice party and we have the singer and everything. Well, your home girl wasn't aware of a party. And so of course I wasn't wearing pants. I was wearing underwear. You know how you just like walk around your house without pants on? Yeah, that was the vibe. Well, I went to the bathroom to put some on. I ran into a singer about to have a quickie with the piano man. I was out of there. When I came back into my room, there were a bunch of girls I knew but weren't friends with just hanging out. Yeah, if there's ever a sentence that's not a sentence, it just seems like stream of consciousness, it's because it is. A lot of these notes have been written as I'm like half conscious, just like typing away my notes at like, oh, no, no, piano man. B -b parties Anyways, then I went to list the people that were at the party. Well, they acted like uncultured swine. Friend one and friend two put their feet on my pillows. If that wasn't enough, friend two started eating mac and cheese off of my bedspread. Well, of course I went off on them and cussed friend two out, but then everyone told me I was overreacting. You wouldn't be saying that if you knew what it took to clean my bedspread. So then we all joined the party, which ended up having a male singer because the female singer was preoccupied. Anyways, the girls all put on weird headpieces and took photos without me, but then I went over and started chatting up the male singer. Chatting up? Am I British? He had curly black hair like Maddie's from... <laughs> He had curly black hair like Maddie's from the 1975. I love how I call him Maddie, as if we're on a first name basis. You know, Maddie Healy, Matthew Healy, the lead singer of the 1975. Yeah, Maddie. <laughs> well, he pretty much looked exactly like Maddie, but he was taller. Anyways, I asked him if I could put some lipstick on him since there were some on display at the party and he said yes. Well, you know how I'm really bad at putting on other people's makeup? I ended up sitting on his lap and get it on right. Then this girl said, everyone's staring. And Maddie lookalike said, let them stare while looking right into my eyes. Is this a fanfic? Well, Maddie, let's just call him that. Took us all out to the movies, but the movie we wanted to see was all sold out. So we had to wait around a bit to see what other movies were playing. While we were waiting, this freaking murder clown pops out from behind the ticket booth and tries to drug us. But then he put the needle down and said it was just a promotion for a movie and turned into a clown plushie. But well, we ended up not seeing a movie. Oh, this is the long dream I had. I don't want to read the rest of this. Well, we ended up not seeing a movie, so I went over to friend two's house to have a dinner with her family. Of course, while we were eating, I discussed friend two's deplorable manners with her mom. And her mom got pissed. Her friend turned big and red like this, but with a human face. It's the teacher from, here, I'll put a photo here. It's the teacher from, I think, Assassination Classroom. I've never seen the anime. The mom tried to punish friend two, but she wanted me as a witness. But as a witness, she would later kill me. So I noped on out of there and flew away. I fly a lot in my 
my dreams. And this is how I started my life on the run. Mom and dad had sent out a missing persons photo and I was basically plastered all over America but I couldn't go back because friend two's mom was trying to kill me. Oh, this just took a turn. So I just kept flying and flying until I reached my grandmother's house, but it was at a ship dock and a cruise ship was about to sail off. Well, I saw Maddie look-alike sitting there and I tried to lay low, but then some girls from a white convertible literally called me out. So of course I started panicking and planning my escape. Well, then I ran into two guys and I asked them if they wanted to go on the run with me and they said, sure. Well then someone popped out of my grandmother's house and tried to physically get me. So I tried to get the two friends to run, but they wouldn't stand up. I ended up getting caught, but I was just asked to help make food in my grandmother's house. I went and of course all of the girls from the party are there and they freak out like normal people would and try to get me to stay but I grabbed the two guys and flew off. I like how flying is my getaway. We then tried to figure out where we could camp out. We couldn't do a log cabin because if someone found us we have to burn the whole house down. No you wouldn't. We ended up settling with burring a hole down in the middle of Lake Michigan and creating an underground living space. That is obviously the solution to the situation when you're on the run from your family and friends is to dig a hole in the middle of Lake Michigan and make an underground base. Ironically enough, all my Minecraft bases are underground. I guess it's making sense. While we were swimming up the river with our super aqua abilities and we kept running into this hard thing. It was the cruise ship, the one that set off at my grandmother's port. We sank the boat because we kept running into their engines and rudder. First of all, I feel like if you run into an engine, you're gonna die. Second of all, crazy that three humans sank a boat. Well, now we had a bunch of people stranded in our territory, so we had to be extra careful. Uh, yeah, because you sank their boat. Then one day while we were flying, I was knocked down by a tree branch. I ended up falling into this cart with people distributing food rations to the shipwrecked. There were two guys on the cart. The one with the food bucket saw how thin I looked. Oh my god, skinny! <laughs> Sorry. I made that comment because I know that is exactly what I was thinking when I wrote this. She was going through some stuff. They wanted to feed me, but the driver reminded him that he gave me food, then they'd come up short for the others. Well, the guy handling the food recognized me, and I knew him because we once loved each other and we still did. He begged me to stay. He told me, you're the only person who's never let me down. And then he showed me this video he still had of the first time we met. We were in a restaurant with live jazz music and I was dancing, but then I saw him off to the side and I approached him and we danced together and I ended up staying. Now let me tell you about him. The video was old. In it, his hair was short and a light brown. His eyes were light and he was slim. He wore a white shirt with a black sports coat over it. In the present day, he was still slim and his eyes were still light, but now his hair is longer and darker and he had facial hair. I don't know what any of this means, but I woke up kind of happy. It means you're lonely, girl. Honestly though, the guy sounds hot. Did I basically just describe any guy you'd find on the street? Yeah. This next one's kind of violent, but I want to read it out loud and experience it with you because I genuinely do not remember this at all. Excuse me if I recline back. I got scoliosis. So it all started when dad took Paulina, Jacqueline, and I to go tubing. We went to a place that had the tube stock. We had just gotten to our tube when someone started shooting. In order to escape, we went through one of those inflatable racetracks, but we had an itty bitty baby with us, so it took a lot of time. We finally got out and the next part of the dream started. Oh yeah, I also dream in like sequences. I was at CVS and there was a potential armed robber heading our way so I went to leave. Why are there so- why is there so much gun violence in my dreams? How did we go from running from a mass shooter to me marrying Joseph Gordon-Levitt? I'm not reading the rest of this. That was weird, Kate. You're weird. <laughs> I just read the first paragraph of this one. 7th of January, 2018. It has swear words in it. I will be reading them. Mom, I'm sorry. I had a dream that Luke Hemmings was a vampire from the anime series Diabolic Lovers. Diabolic Lovers, if you've never watched it, just don't watch it. It's so bad. Don't watch Diabolic Lovers. It has a lot of issues with, um, how do I put it? Consent? Anyways, he was being on trial for being a whore. And I mean, he didn't really have a case. All of his other hookups testified against him, but I stood, but I stood by him throughout the trial. <laughs> I walked with him as they led him to the trial, a mob of angry women trailing behind us, ready for Luke to be convicted. We went through what seemed to be a beach bar and saw us being live broadcasted on the news. He was convicted and sentenced to death. In parentheses, I have burned at the stake. For some odd reason, they let me be with him throughout the entire 
process. We went to our room and they gave him coffee and let us have one free day together. We ran down flights of stairs, not really taking the time to use them, just kind of hopping from landing to landing. When we got outside, we were at the back entrance to some amusement park. It had just rained, the ground was wet, and the clouds were parting. Sunlight streamed through the parted skies and warmed our skin. Because we were in the back entrance, they wouldn't actually let us go into the park. Luke turned to me and said, It's okay, Kate. I'm just glad we had these moments to ourselves. I walked with them, hand in hand, to meet his end. We went back to the room from before to be transported. Luke was taken to a place that looked to be straight out of the Salem Witch Trials. He was seated in a chair in front of the stake, but before he was executed, the man who was going to carry out the execution revealed that he had given Luke caffeine to see if the stimulant would produce a positive reaction to someone who was about to die. That came out of my brain. That's not even the end of it. He offered to let Luke live if he would give them data on how the stimulant worked. Although skeptical, he would make the decision to accept his proposal. Then the dream started from the point where we ran down the stairs and played out again. We never had to say goodbye. That was a fan fiction. That was straight up fan fiction. 27th April, 2020. This was during COVID, do y'all remember that? I dreamt I was in the hospital for some reason and one of my friends came to visit. We were eating at a table arranged in a corner, facing a wall with a TV hanging higher up. There was a door with lots of windows to our left. She was either a music or art major. She said she had written me a song and then proceeded to play I Lived by One Republic. She brought me to IHOP to eat. One of the nurses came by with my medicine and said, since you're eating solid foods now, I crushed your pills into a soup. She set down a red colored miso soup with green onions and tofu in a small brown cardboard box. I took a glance at my friend and took the soup like a shot. I got some soup on the table in front of us. Well, oh ho ho, here comes the man of the hour, Vernon! <laughs> That's right, it's a fan fiction again! Yes, I looked up from the table and saw Hansel Vernon cleaning my hospital room's window. I saw him outside of what looked like a nurse's station, but it wasn't. He sprayed something, smelled it, and then smiled and nodded his head. Ew. Why would he smell it? He cleaned the outside of my windows with the cutest stupid smile on his face. He then came into the room and said, Thank you. In tiny. In tiny? I wrote the words in tiny? That's so 2020 of me. He cleaned my window with window cleaner that smelled like roses. He knew I loved the smell of roses. Then the dream shifted to focus on him. Of course it did. He was walking with a friend. They were both dressed in black school uniforms. They walked into what initially looked like a restaurant but ended up being a SpongeBob SquarePants event. There was a security guard that dared the pair to find and steal the Krabby Patty formula. Well, Vernon just took a frame painting down from the wall and started peeling off the canvas. He peeled back several layers until he stopped at a picture with a SpongeBob window at the top right corner. He put the painting back on the wall and punched his hand through the window. While well, the security guard went off and so did some alarms, a door opened and they ran through to see an animatronic Mr. Krab shouting, Let him through! Let the smelly plankton try to steal my formula! And it was revealed that the the hole Vernon made led to a square compartment in the next room over, and an animatronic claw was ready to chop off Vernon's hands. That's crazy. That was the end of the dream. At least it was a happier dream. Okay, so I just read another dream that started very violent and ended with me flirting with Matthew Gray Goobler. So this next one's gonna be the last story. This is from November 21st, 2020. I had a dream that I was somewhere on set with the Criminal Minds cast, except the show wasn't Criminal Minds. I walked into the living room and I saw Matthew and Patrick Brewster. I like how I call Matthew Gray Goobler Matthew. Again, with the first name basis. They asked me to take a photo of them, so I spent a while framing it. Then Matthew and I went off to a room and I started mingling with the other people that were in the room. I went to the kitchen to go talk to Matthew and I saw him talking with a girl. She turned to leave the conversation and it was someone I went to high school with. She was crying because Matthew didn't want to work with her on a film she had written. I told her rejection is good. It means you tried. Then an alarm went off and we all went to another room. It was a big octagonal foyer. We filed into a room with a bunch of people and we were giving these little cards the size of business cards. On it, it had a time period and a tally of lives we had lived. Matthew and I were going to be living our last lives together. Matthew and I were talking as if we were in our own little world. People were envious. Apparently Goob is quite the heartthrob. Goob? You're calling Matthew a gay goobler. Goob? Baby, it's time to get in touch with reality. This isn't real. This isn't real. I was talking to him about relationships because I liked him and I wanted to be with him. Duh! He told me that he didn't want to commit to anything. Heard that one before. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he had a pessimistic outlook on love. And I was like, Don't you think it's fate that we're going to be together for our last lives? And he said, 
I haven't talked to God in a while. We walked out onto a porch and it was raining. He put his hand around my waist, pulling me along as we slithered through the crowd. Even after his harsh words, he still made a point to have me close to him. We walked up to a buggy, like from the Victorian era, and escaped the rain. 20 year old me, oh god. 20 year old me really wanted to be with a man who was like, I'm not ready to commit to anything. That was like almost all of the dreams I remembered from 2017 to 2020. Of course there are some in between that didn't get longed, but these are the ones that remain. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that we have this on record. And now it's in my digital footprint. If you enjoyed this video, I have years more of these dreams and I would love to share them with you. Hopefully they won't all be violent. I don't know why there's so much violence in my dreams. Because the thing is, I still call them dreams because I have nightmares that are so much worse. Like if you think these dreams are vivid, imagine what my nightmares are like. Oh, 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 let's vote on the most interesting love interest. Are we going Matthew Gray Goobler, Luke Hemmings, or the faceless guy who could be anyone off the street. And I specifically remember writing that being like, oh my gosh, what if I just dreamt of my soulmate? With that description, you definitely did. This Friday's video almost didn't come out because I'll be honest, it's Wednesday. I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do for a video. And I was like, I'm gonna be in bed. I'm gonna do my shower. I'm gonna get comfy and we're gonna figure it out. And this is what I resulted in. And I hope it was entertaining for you. So please subscribe and leave a like and comment down below anything you might wanna see from me. Okay, peace. Oh my gosh, can you see my finger? I cut it today on the body butter from Trader Joe's.